Thunder! Thunder! Thundercats! Ho! Greetings, my dear viewers. It is I, Drehon, and welcome back to another Dungeons & Dragons character conversion. If you're new to this series, I take a look at different fictional characters, or real-life icons, and convert them into the Dungeons & Dragons format, with at least a 90% accuracy to the lore of that character or individual. Today we are going off of Thundercats, the main character, Lionel. Because, well, it's my birth month! So I'm doing a series of videos that are more in tune with my interest, and Lionel and the Thundercats uh, is one of those things. At least it's very close. Uh, we're doing mostly sword wielders this year for my birth, birth month, and I happen to know a little bit about Lion-O. And he's pretty cool. Uh, I watched the remake of the Thundercats, and I also watched a little bit of the original Thundercats. So I've got some information. Uh, it's been a while since I watched the remake, so I don't remember everything perfectly, and I only know up to uh, the elephant episode. Uh, where the bell chimed when Tigra uh, betrayed lion -O by kissing Chitara. Uh, that still confuses me, but whatever. Anyways, let's go ahead and get started with this build. Now, normally I would use the point-buy system for our stats, but it turns out when I was doing the point-buy, I ended up having the same exact stat array as the standard array system, so we're just going to call it the standard array system. 15 on strength, 12 on dexterity, 10 on constitution, 8 on intelligence because he is somehow an idiot, wisdom is going to be a 13, and charisma is going to be a 14. Now his wisdom's an 8 because in the original, he's a child in a grown-up's body who has to mature really quickly, which is not ideal in the new series. He's just an idiot. Moving on, we are going to go into the race, and we are going with Leonin, Anthropomorphic Lions. Duh! Ironically, this is the second time we have done the Leonin race for a character. Uh, my first one was Ajani Goldmane, one of the Planeswalkers from Magic the Gathering. Uh, not important for this build, but I would recommend checking out that video as well, in case you wanted to do something a little bit different. Uh, for the ability score increases, we'll get a plus one to our strength and a plus two to our charisma. So 16 on both of them. You'll get a walking speed of 35 feet, dark vision for 60 feet. We get a claws ability, which lets us get a stronger unarmed strike. We get daunting roar, which is pretty good ability in my opinion. And we also get a skill proficiency in intimidation. For languages, we get common and leonin. For background, we're going with noble. Who would have thought that a prince would be a noble? Hmm, who would have thought? Anyways, we get the proficiencies in the following categories, skills, history, and persuasion. Tools, we get a tool, uh, we get a gaming set of our choice or a musical instrument. I don't remember Lionel playing any instruments, so we're going with a gaming set. We'll go with three Dragon Auntie. For languages, we're going with Luxodon. I chose it because the last episode I remember seeing of the new series was that elephant episode. So we're going with that. For feature, we got position of privilege. Now, he doesn't use this too often because, you know, he's currently trying to kill a certain demon mummy for killing his father. So, yeah. Uh, I do think he pushed that privilege card a little bit in the newer series, but I don't quite remember. 
Anyway, we need class, and we're going with Paladin, which gives us a hit die of a d10. Since we don't really have a constitution modifier, we just get 10 hit points to start out with. For proficiencies, you get the following categories. Armor, you get all armor and shields. Weapons, simple weapons and martial weapons. Saving throws is wisdom and charisma. Unfortunate, but oh well. Skills, we get athletics and religion. For your paladin features, we have divine sense and lay on hands. Well, we're going to multi-class into Warlock really quick because we have a tie to the Sword of Omens slash Eye of Thundera. Uh, I'm sure you know the iconic weapon. If you don't, please watch one of the two shows. That way you know what I am talking about because I am not going to explain that in detail. But the closest I can think of to get to the Sword of Omens is the otherworldly patron of the Hexblade. And I made a boo-boo on that extra hit points. Give me a quick second. That is supposed to be Warlock. And the extra D8. There we go. Okay. Better, better. All right. Otherworldly Patron, Hexblade. That's going to give you the features Hexblade's Curse and Hex Warrior. You're going to be using Charisma for your spell casting feature. Or Pack Magic, rather. Anyways, moving on to level 2 Warlock, we need Eldritch Invocations. We're going to be using Devil Sight and Eldritch Sight. When we get to level 8 Warlock, we will have Devil Sight, Eldritch Sight, Eldritch Smite, and Ghostly Gaze. Other than Eldritch Smite, those three sight-based invocations are to mimic the uh, sight beyond sight that Lionel gets when using the Sword of Omens. Eldritch Smite is the power beyond power feature from the Sword of Omens. Uh, I wish I was able to mimic the uh, Thundercats Ho uh, chant by being able to summon certain creatures, but I wasn't able to find a way to do that. Being able to teleport your allies to you. Uh, unfortunately, that, that isn't a spell. Uh, moving on to level 3 Warlock, we will get a Pact Boon, grab Pact of the Blade. Level 4 Warlocks get an Ability Score Improvement, go ahead and increase Strength by 1, and Wisdom by 1. Don't worry, we'll round out that Strength here in a moment. We're skipping over level 5 Warlock because we don't get any special features from that other than a new spell slot, but with Paladin level 2, we get a fighting style. Go with dueling. For spell casting, you use your Charisma modifier again, so not any real change there, but you also get the future Divine Smite. Moving along to Paladin level 3, we get Divine Health and a Sacred Oath. A demon mummy just killed your father and you want vengeance. So the Oath of Vengeance is going to be your Oath. You can also go with Oath of the Crown, because he's a lion, he's a prince. Uh, but we're using Oath of Vengeance for this particular build because of how that version of the TV show plays out. Channel Divinity, you're going to have Abjure Enemy and Vow of Enmity. Level 4 Paladins get either an Ability Score Improvement or a Feat. We're going to grab a Feat. We're going to go with Heavy Armor Master. This will increase our Strength by 1. And while we are wearing Heavy Armor, any Slashing, Bludgeoning, and Piercing damage is reduced by 3. This is a reference to that show's Armor of Omens. It looks pretty heavy. <laughs> so we're going with Heavy Armor Master just for that. Moving on to level 5 Paladin, we'll get an extra attack, which will let us attack two times per attack action. 
Level 6 Paladins get Aura of Protection. Level 7 Paladins get Relentless Avenger from the Oath of Vengeance. Level 8 Paladins get an Ability Score Improvement. Go ahead and max out that Strength to 20. Level 10 Paladins get Aura of Courage. Level 11 Paladins get Improved Divine Smite. And level 12 Paladins get an Ability Score Improvement. Go ahead and increase your Charisma to an 18. Level 6 Warlocks get a Cursed Spectre. Uh, I don't remember this happening in the show. It probably never did. But I think it might be overlooked for this particular build. You don't exactly need to be able to summon a specter after slaying a creature. It's just kind of there. Level 8 Warlocks will be our final level, and we are going to cap our Charisma to 20. And that is it for the build. Our second Leonin character, Lionel from the Thundercats. I do hope you enjoyed this build, and if you would like to see a particular character be made in a Dungeons & Dragons style, put your suggestions in the comment section down below. Uh, but before we go, I have had one of my viewers suggest that I make a spell list for suggested spells that you will need for this character. And I went ahead and did just that. For your Paladin spells, I would recommend grabbing Compelled Duel, Divine Favor, Heroism, Thunderous Smite, Shield of Faith, Locate Object, Zone of Truth, Blinding Smite, Crusader's Mantle, Daylight, and Remove Curse as some optional spells. For Warlock, I would recommend grabbing Mage Hand, Eldritch Blast, and True Sight for your cantrips, because True Strike is a very good spell when used properly. Uh, since this is an older TV show, your villain likes to monologue. Use True Strike while they're monologuing. Uh, Armor of Agathus, Hellish Rebuke, and Hex are pretty good spells to use. Hold Person, Shatter, and Suggestion. Counter spell and Dispel Magic, and also the Banishment spell are some spells that you might want to use. Alright, so with that being said, I do hope you enjoyed. Once again, if you would like to see a particular character, put that in the comment section down below. Uh, Tuesday is going to be Ryoku, uh, Ryuko from Miraculous Ladybug. Or should I call her, her by her actual name, Kagami Surugi? I have a feeling I pronounced that wrong. Anyways, I'm going to be doing Kagami from Miraculous Ladybug, also known as Ryuko with the use of the Dragon Miraculous. And next week, on Thursday, I will be doing Sarkon Vol. The Draconic Worshipping Planeswalker. So stay tuned for those videos, and until next time, this has been Drehan, and I am offline.